All right, a little disclaimer before we start. I am sick, so I'm sorry if I sound weird right now. But that doesn't mean we still can't talk about Pokemon, so we still have a video this week. Yeah, apologies in advance. What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be returning to a Generation 1 Pokemon. Well, at least for a few generations. You know, I actually considered using this thing as Sun and Moon since it shows up early in game. That's right, it's Magneton, the Magnet Pokemon. I still remember taking pics of them in Pokemon Snap, or at least trying to, since at first they just showed up as screeching orbs. Truth be told, Magneton isn't always the most interesting Pokemon. I mean, what personality does a collection of Metal Balls really have? Well, I guess there's that one time that it fell in love with Pikachu, but I mean, is that really a personality? I don't know. But hey, when you get to competitive, thankfully personality doesn't matter that much. So let's check if these magnets had any magic. How good was Magneton actually? In the following video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. You'd think that Magneton's impressive special stat of 120 would be enough to boost it to the top of the Gen 1 meta, given how good that stat was in the generation. Unfortunately, if you watched our video on the Generation 1 meta, you know that even the legendary Zapdos couldn't really make the electric type work. The fact of the matter is that Rhydon and Golem were so overwhelmingly powerful that having electric and normal type moves as your main attacks didn't make for the greatest combo. Magneton's mediocre 70 base speed and limited move pull also were points against it. In fact, it ended up having to run Mimic just to copy other Pokemon's moves to fill in gaps in its own. That 120 special stat could potentially put the hurt on, but Magneton depended severely on team support from Pokemon like Starmie that could take out its ground type counters. Otherwise, it was just a lunk of useless metal in the face of those Pokemon. It was down and underused in Gen 1, and in Nintendo Cup, it was ranked in the G tier for god awful. And even if you wanted to use it, since steel types aren't a thing yet, why not just use Zapdos or Jolteon instead? Magneton became one of the inaugurable class of Steel types in Generation 2, along with Steelix, Skarmory, Fortress, and Scizor, and being the first Pokemon ever to change typing, along with its pre-evolution. Unfortunately, while Steelix, Skarmory, and Fortress had the stats to make use of the best defensive typing in the game, Magneton didn't have the same metal. Its base 95 defense was okay, but 70 special defense after the split with 50 HP was downright bad. It wasn't an incredible sweeper either, given its low speed, so that 120 special attack and stab Thunderbolt kind of went to waste. What's more, Gen 2's meta contains special walls like Blissey and of course Snorlax, certainly not great opponents for the Magnetic Trio. Also, Snorlax can learn Earthquake, and being a new Steel type in addition to its Electric typing, yeah, that's times 4 from a lot of Pokemon who can carry Earthquake. Magneton's only real set was predicted on trying to set up ways for its to survive and fire off a strong Thunderbolt or Hidden Power Water, with Substitute and Thunder Wave as its dual safety measures. As for counters, anything that could hit Magneton with a super effective move could pretty reliably kill it, and if they could tank its attacking moves, then Magneton was really screwed. Along with the aforementioned special walls, that meant electric types like Electabuzz and Ampharos, who didn't mind getting hit by a Thunderbolt at all, even ruined its day in underuse because they had fire type coverage, where it was tiered. That 120 special attack was promising, but Magneton's move point stats just weren't up to par quite yet for it to be overused. Then in Gen 3, Three, everything changed. Well, actually one thing changed, but boy was it important. The introduction of Magneton's ability, Magnet Pull. An ability only available to Magneton and Nose Pass in Generation 3, Magnet Pull prevents Steel types from switching out. Given that Skarmory and Fortress were two of the most powerful defensive Pokemon in the game, Magneton's sole role as a Steel Trapper was coveted. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this one out. Switch in Magneton against an enemy Skarmory, blast it with Thunderbolt, and now feel free to sack it however is needed to facilitate your team to run wild. This was a bit harder with Fortress since Magneton relied on hit a power fire, and Fortress could occasionally ruin its day with Earthquake, but many Magnetons ran HP Grass and Ice instead. That's because Magneton wasn't really a Pokemon to build a team around. Its job was to help other teams that might struggle with specific Steel-type Pokemon, or Pokemon that are quad weak to its hidden powers like Swampert. These hidden powers were tailored to whatever your team needed help with. Substitute was run to potentially capitalize on switches, as Magneton's base 120 special attack was still quite respectable, and the last slot was just a choice of how you wanted to annoy your opponent best. Poisoning them with Toxic, paralyzing them with T-Wave, or even dissuading switch-ins by lowering the special defense with Metal Sound. Some Magnetons even attempted a Rest Talk set, which seems like it comes a generation too late but took advantage of Magneton's Steel-type to make it a long-lasting nuisance. Just like my cold, someone get me a Pokemon Center! Finally, Magneton's last set turned into a makeshift sweeper and lure for its biggest counter, the similarly trapping endowed Dugtrio, who ate normal Magneton up. With Endor and Salakberry, Magneton could outspeed Dugtrio and annihilate it with HP Grass or Ice, leaving a quite powerful boosted electric type on the field and your opponent short one trapper. Aside from Dugtrio, Magneton still saw its fair share of runs ended at the hands of Blissey and Snorlax, and many other ground types destroyed it as well. Flygun, Claydol, and Swampert were all good candidates. Here's the thing, Magneton was still not very good Good at stuff it tried to do before, but it was just great at killing Skarmory, and in Gen 3, that was more than enough to merit overuse. 
and Gen 4 magnets had suddenly decided that being one big ol' honkin' steel magnet was better than three. And that decision rewarded it with a whole bunch of stats, even though it kinda has three eyes, so maybe the three of them are still there. I don't know. 10 special attack, 20 in both defenses, 20 HP, and even 10 attack. And all it cost was 10 speed, which Magnezone will happily give up. Those extra stats went a long way, making Magnezone not purely a Skarmory killer anymore, but transforming into the bane of almost every steel type, including Jirachi and Scizor two of the strongest Pokemon in Overuse. Its move pool was still quite shallow, but quite enough to get the job done. Thunderbolt and Hidden Power provided coverage, and Substitute allowed Magneton to evade status and make even more of its attacking prowess after eliminating a Steel type. In the final slot, Explosion meant Magnezone could suddenly change the tempo of the entire match, with proper prediction. Whereas Magnet Rise gave it a chance to take down even Earthquake using Steels like Metagross. Magnezone also had a few other sets to its name, like a Choice Scarf set that aimed to take advantage of its large special attack, and even a Sub Select Sweeper set that just set up on trapped Steel types with Charge Beam to turn into quite the formidable opponent. It also had the common Life Orb and Spec sets most special attackers had, and finally, it even could provide utility for the team in the form of Dual Screen. This variety in sets is all because of its incredible matchup against one of the most common types in the game, which let Magnezone set up for free quite frequently if it switches into on a Steel type. In fact, a ton of Steel types ended up running Shed Shell just because Magnezone was such a hard counter if they didn't have a way to escape its magnetic grasp. But as always, Magneton hated special walls and ground types. Blissey, Celebi, and Storlax all feared nothing but explosion, and Rotom didn't even care about that. Gliscor, Flygon, and Swampert could be handled by Magnet Rise, but depending on its hidden power, they could also tank Magnezone's hits and immediately knock it out. Heatran melted its fellow Steel type, and finally Dugtrio had a better matchup this gen because of those lost 10 points of speed. But honestly, I don't think Magnezone was complaining. If if it could even complain because it doesn't have facial expressions but overuse once again and oh yeah its ability was even good enough to put it in some uber teams explosion got a pretty huge nerf in gen 5 but magnezone still did its job well vault switch gave it a really nice option that made its choice spec set the most powerful as magneton could now somewhat maintain momentum even despite its lackluster speed while the substitute attacker was still around magnezone found it hard to compete as a straight up offensive threat in gen 5 it relied a lot more on getting those boosts to be useful and could actually be quite a Threat. Unfortunately, the meta wasn't kind to it though. As we always say before, because, well, it happened. Strong fighting types are everywhere and they can beat Magnezone very easily. And even though a good amount of Pokemon couldn't switch into its strong electric and fire type moves, a good amount of them could definitely take it down one on one, like Lucario. But don't get me wrong, Magnezone was still an amazing Pokemon because trapping steel types was great. Generation 5 didn't add that many great steel types, but it was a good generation for dragon types with Garchomp unbanned and Hydreigon introduced. And Magnezone being able to trap a type that resists dragon types was one of the best best friends a dragon type could have. All of this kept Magnezone in overuse. It also got a new ability in Analytic, but in singles, uh, yeah, I don't think this thing's ever gonna drop Magnet Pull. Now, before we move on to Gen 6, this is normally the part where we start VGC unless we actually find some evidence of the Pokemon being used in Generation 4. Anyways, if you're paying attention in the beginning, we will not be covering VGC for Magnezone. The reason being is that Magnezone is not known to be used much despite having high special attack and having electric moves. Magnezone is quad weak to ground, so Earthquake is very good against it despite being weaker as a spread move. Magnezone is also bought by Heat Wave. Magnepol isn't as important since it only traps steel types and it is more than likely only isolating a single Pokemon, which has a partner right next to it, rather than something like Shadow Tire that could potentially trap both Pokemon. Finally, there are other faster electric types who are also flying type that can do pretty well in terms of damage and can also avoid Earthquake. And if you wanted a slow electric type for something like Trick Room, then Electros is better because it also has Levitate. Alright, cool? Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Magnezone. But it's fine, we still got singles. And finally, Gen 6. By this point, I think you get the gist. While Magnezone actually does have some pretty impressive stats to write home about, it's slow as hell and doesn't have a great move pool. But it's got Magnet Pool. And that's what Magnezone is truly good for, as the only other Pokemon with Magnet Pool is the Nose Pass line, at least until Gen 7. And they're certainly not gonna be killing Steel types anytime soon you know, considering what type they are themselves. Magnezone sets basically just adapt to how it might best have some sort of use outside killing steel types. But it's only stayed and overused, and yes, it's still overused in Gen 6 because of that niche. And in Gen 6, that meant Choice Scarf because yeah, that speed stat sucks. And, you know, since we didn't cover VGC and we have time, I normally don't do this, but I'd like to mention that even though its pre-evolution Magnezone was rarely used, it still kinda did stuff in Gen 6 overuse because it had slightly more speed than Magnezone. So it was run with a Choice Scarf instead of Eviolite because, you know, I mean, you're not really gonna use this thing to tank hits anyway, and since you're mainly trapping other Steel types, it might be handy to have more speed than it, and Magneton's special attack isn't that bad, so you can kinda make this work. But it was mostly outclassed by its own evolution, but I just thought I'd mention it. And that's it, so how good was Magneton actually? Well. 
it's pretty good, especially after evolving into Magnezone. But if we haven't made it clear enough already, that's mainly because of its ability. Because, you know, it kind of shot up in the usage after it got its ability. Sure, it could actually threaten stuff offensively in Gen 4, but it still wasn't a premier special attacker, and it's unlikely it ever will be again. Until something else gets Magnet Pole that has a really good matchup against most of the still types, it's likely Magnezone will always be a fairly useful Pokemon just for that one thing it does so well. But hey, I guess you can be relevant by concentrating just on one highly specific niche, like making Pokemon videos on YouTube, I guess. I don't know. Makes you think. And I know since a lot of you are going to ask about Gen 7, especially with Ultra Sun and Moon out, again, I want to wait until the meta's fully developed, especially since a new game just came out. But I hear Magnezone is still doing its same old thing and is currently overused, as of this video anyway. And now it even uses Electrium Z or Steelium Z to help with that. And it can trap and eliminate Celesteela pretty well, so yeah, thank God for that, to be honest. Thanks for watching everyone, as always if you liked the video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and of course comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to all of you for watching as I wouldn't be able to do this without you. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, and that's all I got, see you next time everyone!